हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू आवर चैनल स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फ्रॉम क्लास ट्वेल्थ फिजिक्स चैप्टर सेमी कंडक्टर्स एंड दिस टॉपिक इज फुल वेव रेक्टिफायर द क्वेश्चन बेस्ड ऑन फुल वेव रेक्टिफायर कम्स मेनी टाइम्स इन एग्जाम्स यू हैव टू एक्सप्लेन द वर्किंग ऑफ फुल वेव रेक्टिफायर यू हैव टू ड्रॉ द डायग्राम ऑफ फुल वेव रेक्टिफायर एंड अदर इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन दिस वीडियो सो लेट स्टार्ट what is a rectifier a rectifier is simply a device which converts ac to dc ac means alternating current and dc means direct current so full wave rectifier it is it is a device which is used to convert AC into DC. So the various parts of the rectifier are shown in this diagram. This is the input AC, which which is to be converted into DC, right? And this whole this whole arrangement is nothing but transformer. you all must have studied the working of transformer a transformer is a device in which there are two coils primary coil and secondary coil and in between those two coils a laminated core is placed right so this is the primary coil of the transformer this is the secondary coil of the transformer and these two lines show the laminated core between the coils but what is transformer doing here we will just uh, discuss in some time these two are pn junctions and this is an external load resistance across which we will get our output direct current and that can be used in the device for which we are using full wave rectifier for example full wave rectifier is in the adapters and chargers of mobile phones and laptops right so what is what is the need of this rectifier in the charger when you charge the battery of your mobile phone the battery supplies direct current to mobile phone right so it has to be charged on direct current but when you charged it through the main supply we know that the main supply contains alternating current so we have to have something in between the battery of the mobile phone and the main supply which can convert ac into dc so all the chargers all the adapters of all those devices which work on dc but we charge them through ac so adapters and chargers of all such devices contain this full wave rectifiers in the chargers or adapters right okay so how does it work it works in two cycles let us discuss first about the positive half cycle then we will discuss about the negative half cycle so in in the first half cycle which is say the positive half cycle in in positive half cycle what happens suppose let us say that this is positive and this is negative this is how ac works right one terminal is positive and the other one is negative and and after some time the positive terminal becomes negative and the negative terminal becomes positive and this happens uh, almost 50 times in one second that is the frequency of ac in india right so suppose this is this end of the input is positive and this is negative so positive 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 this end will also be positive and this end will also be negative now due to mutual inductance transformer works on the principle of mutual inductance so due to mutual inductance if this is positive then a negative charge will be induced here and if this is negative a positive charge will be induced here so due to this we can clearly see that the pn junction this pn junction becomes reverse biased because positive is connected to the negative terminal and this pn junction becomes forward biased actually what we are doing we have connected the output external output with the suppose uh, middle point of the of this coil 
सो वॉट हैपन्स लेट एस से दैट दिस दिस टर्मिनल इज एट टेन वोल्ट लेट एस से एंड दिस टर्मिनल इज एट सपोज माइनस टेन वोल्ट वी आर जस्ट टेकिंग एग्जाम्पल्स टू मेक यू अंडरस्टैंड थिंग्स बेटर सो लेट एस से दैट दिस टर्मिनल is at plus 10 volt and this terminal is at minus 10 volt so uh, the potential difference between this end and this end is 20 volt so the middle point the potential difference of the middle point will be 0 volt and that 0 is positive as compared to minus 10 and negative as compared to plus 10 because it is less than plus 10 so we can say that the p part of this pn junction is connected to minus 10 that is lower potential and the n part is connected to zero that means higher potential so when the p part is connected to the lower potential and n part is connected to the higher potential we say that the pn junction is reverse biased and in that case if if these pn junctions are ideal pn junctions let us say these are ideal pn junctions so in case of ideal pn junctions if the pn junction is reverse biased no current flows through the circuit it blocks the current right so current will be blocked now uh, let me remove the values you have understood the concept okay let's discuss this also then we can remove the values so this p is at 10 volt and n it at, is at 0 volt so we can say that the p part is at higher potential and the n part is at lower potential so this particular pn junction is forward biased so it will allow the current to pass through it right so what happens what happens current will not flow current will not flow from through this upper half but the current will flow through the lower half and when this pn junction is connected we know the direction of current is like this so current flows like this and in the output resistor it goes like this in the same direction right so we will get a continuous flow of current in in one particular direction so this is direct current okay now what happens in negative half cycle in negative half cycle what happens oops just a sec okay in negative half cycle what happens this terminal becomes negative and this terminal becomes positive due to this this end of this coil becomes positive and this is negative and again due to induction positive charge will be induced here and negative charge will be induced here so we can clearly see that in this case this pn junction becomes reverse biased because because now the p is connected to the negative and due to that uh, the n part will be at higher potential so this pn junction becomes reverse biased and this pn junction becomes forward biased so what happens a current flows through this pn junction like this from p to n which makes the flow of current through the external resistance in the same direction right so this external branch containing this resistance will get a continuous flow of current in one particular direction so this is nothing but direct current so this is how we can convert alternating current into direct current but there is a catch we have just rectified the direction wala part of the current but what about the magnitude we know that there are two differences between alternating current and direct current magnitude as well as direction alternating current changes both magnitude and direction and the magnitude and direction of direct current always remains fixed so what happens if the input ac what is happening if the input ac is like this
if the input AC was this, the output DC was like this. Right. So, the problem is we have rectified only the direction part. So, the direction of this current is not changing, but the magnitude is still changing, right? Because the input that we are feeding this circuit is not of constant magnitude. It first increases to a certain maximum value, then it decreases to zero, then it again increasing. So, we are getting the DC in the same way but in the same direction. So, we, we do not want this type of DC. We need a constant current in one particular direction. So, what we will do? We will pass this output through something which is called filter circuit. Filter filter circuit. What is a filter circuit? The output of this uh, rectifier, suppose this is, this is the rectifier, right? This is the rectifier. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there is one more important thing to discuss here. Transformer plays one other important role also that we have just discussed that the main supply is alternating. But it is 230 volt. Generally in India, this main supply is 230 volts. But the laptops and the mobile phones, they charge on a very small voltage like 10 volt, 20 volt. So, apart from converting that alternating voltage into direct current or alternating current into direct current, we have to first step down that value also right from 230 it has to be stepped down to 20 volt to 10 volt so transformer does that work for us right okay now let's come back to the filter circuit so this is the rectifier and the output this is the output which is coming out of the rectifier now we have to give this output two directions in one branch we will connect a capacitor and the other branch is going straight like this. So, the output, this is the output of the rectifier which is, which is a current having both alternating and direct current components, right? It still has some properties of AC that we have to remove. So, what happens when, when it gets two branches, only the alternating current wala part will pass through the capacitor. We all know that the capacitive reactance of the capacitor is 1 upon 2 pi nu c where nu is the frequency and for dc capacitive reactance is the opposition of uh, opposition to current offered by the capacitor and for so it it is it is nothing but a property like resistance so for dc for dc nu is what nu is zero so, Xc is 1 upon 0 that is infinity. So, capacitor offers infinite resistance to the flow of direct current. So, direct current cannot pass through the capacitor. Capacitor blocks direct current. So, what happens? The AC component, the AC component of this current will pass through this branch and in this branch, we are going to get pure, pure DC. And this AC will again be fed to the input of the rectifier so it can be used again for rectification right so here we will get the pure dc and this particular part of the rectifier is called filter circuit and the current which comes out from this is like this having negligible variation which is which can be ignored easily because we cannot detect that variation. That is a very, very, very small variation. Even our device doesn't know that the current is varying that much because it is designed to perform on DC. And if it is performing well, then obviously it is ignoring this much difference. So, this green line will be the final output that we are going to get after passing this output of rectifier through filter circuit.
so this is everything about the working of full wave rectifier but you have to explain all that that we have discussed in this video obviously you don't just have to write these small lines <laughs> teacher is not going to give you full mark you have to explain each and everything that i have explained in this video right only then you will be getting full mark so prepare it very carefully i'll meet you in the next lecture till then all the very best